Hi everyone and welcome back to another instructional video from SARS guys. This is part two of the two part series on how to set up your new Zendesk trial. In part one, we covered uh, signing up for the trial, setting up the email channel, and then went into configuring a form as well as adding some custom fields to it. So in this video, we are going to go through the setup of business rules and then uh, step over into how to test your new instance and launching your new Zendesk. So the Zendesk workflows and business rules are managed through various objects, uh, the most important one being triggers. So if we expand our objects and rules, we will go down to our business rules and we will see triggers. So we're going to open up triggers. There will be some default triggers that were created as part of our initial setup. Uh, and these are all notification triggers. So in Zendesk, a trigger is basically an automated workflow that based on a set of conditions will perform certain actions. So a trigger, for example, will be set up to say when a new ticket is created, then set the following values on a ticket or assign this ticket to a specific group or assignee or send an email to a group of agents or the assignee or send an email to the end user. Uh, so for example, triggers are used to send the emails back to the customer once they have submitted a ticket. So the trigger is what responds back to the customer to say, for example, thank you for submitting the request and someone will get back to you shortly. Those triggers are referred to as notification triggers and some default ones have been added out of the box in your new trial. So the first thing usually is to just look at the ones that are already there. So the first concept to understand, uh, assignee would be your agents that are work or your agent that is assigned to the request. So there's some email correspondence here to notify the assignee that they've just been assigned to a ticket. It will notify the assignee if there's a new comment update from the customer. So if the customer provided additional information by email, then they will, they will get a notification and notify the assignee of a reopen ticket. So if they, if they have solved the ticket and the customer replies to that and it reopens, they will, the agent will receive an email to say the ticket has been reopened. And then we have requesters. So these are your customers or whoever submitted the request is referred to as the requester. So this trigger will notify the requester and the CCs on that ticket of any comment updates. So any public comment that's made on a ticket will trigger an email back to the request and CCs so that they can see what that comment is. The request and CCs will be emailed when a new request is received. So if the requester or the customer sends in an email to your support email address, the ticket will be created and then this trigger will respond back to them to say we have received your request. A proactive ticket is a ticket created by an agent. So the customer did not send an email in to create the ticket, but the agent created a ticket on behalf of your customer or end user. So the moment the agent creates a ticket, this trigger will send an email to that requester or end user or customer to say we have created a ticket on your behalf. So that's what a proactive ticket is. And then uh, finally, here's one here that notifies all agents when a new request is received. So you could look at these and decide if you want any of them. Uh, in many cases, if your agents are going to be working within the Zendesk interface, it might not make sense to send them constant emails. Uh, the emails are helpful if your agents are not actively working in Zendesk and you want to have emails tell them that things are assigned then you would keep them active. Um, so for now, I'm gonna just deactivate this notify all agents. Some of these we can keep for now, uh, but I just wanted to show you I can do that. So once you've selected a trigger that you don't wanna use at this stage, you just check the box and you can click the deactivate at the bottom and that'll move it to deactive triggers. All right, so what does a trigger look like? Let's open up the notify request and CCs of a receive request trigger. So I'll click on this box over here. Right, so we have a trigger name at the top. Always try to uh, be as descriptive as possible so you know exactly what the purpose or objective of the trigger is. And then you can add more detail in the description box. 
So it helps you with troubleshooting to know what the purpose of the trigger is. The first section will be your conditions. So what makes this trigger fire? And in this case, you will see we have the ticket object is created. So this trigger is going to run whenever a ticket is created. And this is within the meet all of the following conditions. So all of these conditions have to be true for this trigger to take action. So the, the ticket is created. So it's only during that initial creation of the ticket, the status category is not solved. So Zendesk has a, a number of statuses that help you manage each stage of your workflow. And as you can see here, we have new, open. So first, when a ticket is created, it will be new. Your agent starts, or your agent is assigned to the ticket. It goes to open. They work the ticket. When they need to get a response back from a customer, they will change it into pending. So pending in Zendesk terminology means we're waiting on the end user or the requester or the customer to come back to us. So we set it on to pending. Once the issue is resolved, we will set this on to solved. Solved status will be automatically reopened if the customer does respond. So we uh, solved tickets can be reopened. And then we have the status closed, which means this has now been finalized. So if someone responds to a closed ticket, a new follow-up ticket is created. It won't reopen the existing ticket. So the logic in this second step says that this status category is not solved. So a ticket is created and it is not solved. The privacy is ticket has public comments. So we make sure that there is at least a public comment on the ticket. So we know there was content submitted by whoever created the ticket. The comment is public. So Zendesk has the option of adding private and public comments. Private comments are only visible to agents. Public comments are visible to the end user and requester. So this just verifies that we actually do have a public comment. And then finally over here, the current user. So when this ticket was created, the user on that ticket is an end user. So this makes sure we don't send an email to say thank you for your ticket if the comment or the ticket was created by an agent, for example. So these are our conditions and all of these have to be true. So what happens when they are true? We then apply the following action. We want to notify users by email and we are going to include the requester and the CCs on the ticket with an email subject. So this is a default email subject that we have over here. So this will be the email subject going back to your requester and CCs and the email body. So you want to review this. Uh, you can change this as it's free text. Uh, and a very cool feature within Zendesk is the ability to use placeholders. So for example, your end user would have sent in an email and used their own subject. So what you could do with your response is look at utilizing one of these placeholders to make sure that you use the same subject that was used by the requester to submit the ticket. So you'll see all these placeholders are broken down by object. So we can include the ticket priority, ticket request details, the email, the ticket request, the first name. So you can use any of this in your subject or body of the email. All right, so the one we want to look at here is the ticket.title, which is the ticket subject. So we're going to copy that. And usually when you respond to an email, we include the RE and we put that ticket title. So now from a threading standpoint on the end user side, it might make more sense. They're going to still reply to their subject, but we could even add some additional information if you wanted to, things like maybe the ticket number, I'm gonna just leave a space here, create it. And then I want to actually include the ticket number. So we go back to our placeholders and we go look for the ticket ID. So let's look at, there's an external ID that's not what we're looking for, we're looking for this, the ticket's ID. So we're gonna put ticket created and that'll actually put the ticket ID in here. 
Just a quick note, if you were using a help center that allows your customers to sign in and view any of their tickets they have submitted, you can change this to a hyperlink if you're using it within the body, like you can see we have here. And to change that to a hyperlink, all you need to do is add the hash in front of the placeholder and that changes it to a hyperlink. But we are not using help center in this case, so we're not going to do that. So there is our subject, our new email subject. And now the body, you could do the same here. You could personalize this to say good day or hello and use a placeholder to bring in the requester's first name uh, or any of the other information that you have over here. It does become risky with emails because when someone sends in an email that is not currently an end user or customer within your Zendesk instance, you don't know what their first name and last name is. And what Zendesk does is it looks at the section that's in front of the email domain so and uses that as the user's name. So if, if someone uh, that is abc123 at gmail.com submits a request to your Zendesk instance, Zendesk is going to grab the ABC123 as the name. So you don't want to use uh, placeholders for first names unless you know that your user data is correct. So for now, I'm just going to leave this, but as you can see, you can, you can update as you want and change the format of the message that will go back to your end user. So audit the notification triggers that you have. Uh, these will be all the emails that go out to end users or to agents when tickets are created or updated. Right, so the next thing we want to do is create some of the basic workflow triggers that we will be needing. So there are many ways to do this, but some of the best practices uh, that are suggested when you work with triggers is to group them together based on their purpose or objective. One thing to note with triggers, the way Zendesk handles these and workflows is every time a ticket is created or updated, Zendesk will take that ticket and then run through the list of triggers that you have from top to bottom. So it will check the conditions on the first trigger. If it finds a match, it will apply that action. It will go back to the top of the list and start going through it again. So if there's no match on the first trigger, no match on the second trigger, the third trigger conditions match your ticket, it will apply the actions on this one and go back to the top and then run through it again. And it will keep doing that until there are no longer any conditions matching your ticket. So the order in which your triggers are arranged is extremely important. So you need to make sure that the correct triggers fire at the right time before triggers that might be reliant on some of those values that will be set by another trigger. And that's why it's important and makes things easier to start grouping things together. For the most part, there are three main categories that you can group triggers in. One would be notifications, so as we already have here, and that sends out all your emails. The second would be what we call set triggers. So these are triggers that set values on your tickets. So you might want to make sure that all tickets that are created at least have some sort of priority set on them, or you want to make sure that all triggers that are created are set to a specific form, if maybe you have multiple forms. So your set triggers are usually the first things you want to do. When ticket comes in, you set all the values that you want to set on that ticket. Right. So the idea here would be to create a category. So we will just call this set. And I can actually edit the order of our set triggers. As you can see here, it, if I say or edit order, I get these two little arrows. So I can move that to the top. Because it's a category, it goes to the top of the notifications category. All right, then we want to click Save. We're going to create another category. So this is now the second important category that we're going to use. And this will be all of your assignment or, as I refer to it, routing triggers. All right, so these are the triggers that, based on conditions, will assign the tickets to specific groups or agents. All right, so I'm going to add a routing 
over here and we are going to edit the order. I want this to be above notifications. In most cases, notifications will be your last category of triggers. So your tickets are created or they're updated. We first set values, we then route them. So once all the values have been set on a ticket, once it's been assigned to the correct groups or the correct agents, only then do we want to send out emails. Because your emails might be, like in this case, notifying assignment or assignees that a ticket's been assigned to them. So you don't want to send this email before you've actually assigned a ticket. So that's why I say most times your notifications will be towards the end. All right, so to create a, a set trigger, an example here, one that is most commonly used would be set priority. All right, now under all conditions, we want to say I'm going to just type ticket here. So if the ticket is created and our priority is blank. The reason I put this in place is if, when tickets are created via a web form, you have the option of allowing your user to select a priority. But if you don't have that option or when e uh, emails are used to create tickets, there is no priority set on your tickets that are created. And priority is one of the important aspects of monitoring service level agreements. Um, so we can get more into that in another video, but it is good practice to make sure that anything that comes into Zendesk at least has a priority. So if there's no priority on this ticket, my action is going to be to set the priority to normal, for example. So now at least I know every ticket that is created will have a priority, and this is a good example of a set priority. All right, so we have this one created. Now we have a set trigger. Now routing triggers, remember we have two groups. Our use case was the initial tickets must be assigned to the customer service team, and we do have two groups. Uh, in this case, we, in theory, don't really need a trigger to route it because we had created our customer service group within Zendesk to be our default group. So if we don't have a trigger that assigns tickets, it is automatically go, well, it will automatically go to that group. But for the purpose of this exercise, let's create a routing trigger that assigns the tickets to our customer service group. Our conditions, this will again be when the ticket is created. And let's add some additional logic in here. And the group is not customer service. We don't want to go and assign things that are already assigned to customer service. So if a ticket is created, that group is not customer service, then we want to assign it to the customer service group. So there's a very basic way of setting up triggers. Uh, the conditions can get pretty complicated. Uh, you need to take time to, to think it through. Um, I do have some other videos and blog posts that provide some best practices when you create triggers. You wanna make sure your conditions are correct so that the triggers fire correctly. So these, these can get pretty tricky. You'll see the conditions are also configured within either the meet all conditions or meet any. So this comes into play in some of the more complicated triggers where you might want to make sure that all of the conditions in the top sections are true, as well as one of the conditions in the any fields at the bottom here. So this does get more complicated than this, but for the purpose of uh, just setting up this basic instance, we now have a routing trigger. Right, so our initial workflow triggers are set up. The email forwarding, once it's turned on, will result in a ticket to be created. We will set the priority to normal. It will then assign the email or the ticket to the customer service team, and it will then send out the necessary emails um, to notify the request and CC that the ticket has been created and it will notify your assignees once they assign to the ticket. 
So that's a quick overview of setting up the triggers and uh, you're basically ready to turn this functionality on. A easy way then, as I mentioned earlier, to test this is to use, if you go back to your email channel, if you have not turned on the email forwarding yet, you can just send an email directly to this support email address and you will be able to see if your workflows are being applied correctly. All right, so now I am going to just copy the support email address and I am going to put it into a new test email and let's just call this please order. All right, so we quickly put a test email together here and we're going to hit send. So I am sending an email to this email address. All right, so now we want to go back to our agent interface. So within the agent interface, your agents are going to live and breathe within the views section. So views are basically filtered views or folders, if you want, that show you your various tickets. So you can set up conditions in your views to allow you to filter by tickets. So for example, all unsolved tickets, uh, these are all default views, but we have all unsolved tickets. So anything that's currently not solved will show up in here. You can have unassigned. So one tickets that are not yet assigned to agents, uh, your unsolved tickets are tickets that are assigned to you as an agent once you sign in, but they have not yet been solved. But here is the ticket that we just created via email. It's already in here and you'll see it shows up in multiple views. So recently updated, it's gonna show it. All unsolved is going to show it, um, but th these things will update as you start working through your tickets. We will cover creating views and some of the other settings in another video, but your default views are more than enough to get you going. So now as an agent, I can see this ticket has just come in one minute ago. Please order, requester is support. So now as an agent, I can click on that. This is what your ticket interface looks like. And we will see here who created it. I need the following. So, and the public reply, this is what the agent can use to respond back to the end user. Now, what I quickly want to show here is the response that I received from Zendesk. You'll see here is the RE please order, which is our placeholder that we had included in our ticket notification trigger and ticket 26 created. Your request 26 has been created. So this is exactly how we have it set up in our trigger. So as the customer, I have received the email. So that is great. And that's all there is to it. So now the agent can use public reply. They can change the status. So if it's resolved, they will change it back to solved. They can mark it as pending or they're busy working on it. So this is where you will then update it. These are the fields, right, that we add to our form. You can add additional custom fields as needed so your agents can populate these fields based on information that you received over here and that could further facilitate your workflow. So there is a lot more to cover within Zendesk, but uh, I think for the purpose of this video, hopefully this provided some help on how to register for a free Zendesk trial, how to configure your email forwarding, how to set up some basic business rules to make sure that the tickets are assigned to the correct group and that emails go back out to your customer or requester to inform them that the ticket has been created. If this video was at all helpful, uh, please feel free to subscribe to the channel. Um, your support is really appreciated. And please visit our website at sarsguys.com where we have a blog with uh, some more free guides and best practices that could help you optimize or set up your Zendesk instance. And please feel free to reach out to us. Uh, we have a contact form on our website or please comment on these videos and we will definitely get back to you and uh, see how we can be of any assistance. We appreciate the support and we'll see you next time.